Oh, hey there. Thanks for joining us. Well, when I say us, I mean me. I'm here to help walk you through some important information about this event. We've got a lot of information to cover, so please try and keep up. It's your responsibility as team captain to make sure all of the players on your team are playing at the skill level that reflects their true ability. Your last opportunity to have any of your players recertify themselves will be immediately following this meeting. We realize most players practice more than normal before they come to this event. Some players may not drink as much and the playing conditions are likely better than what they are used to. Don't let your team get disqualified due to any of these reasons. If anyone has gone up on your team during the summer session locally, it's your responsibility to ensure they're playing at that higher skill level here. The ladies and gentlemen you'll see wearing bright green shirts are official observers. Some observers may also be incognito during the tournament. In some cases, you'll be aware of when your team is being observed. In other cases, you won't. If there is a W on the score sheet on the left side of a player's skill level, it means that player has been marked with a watch. A player or players on your team may be marked with a watch for various reasons. Random selection. The player may have a low number of scores. The league operator may be unsure of a player's ability, or it could be other general concerns. A W may appear next to a player's skill level at any time during the event. When a W appears, it means that player must be observed if he or she plays during that match. It is your responsibility to request with the referee for an official observer to be called before you play a player with a watch on them. Notify the referee as soon as possible. The referee will call to get an observer right away. The referee must initial the score sheet before the match begins. If you play a player with a W next to his or her skill level without requesting an observer, that player may be one skill level higher for the next round. Be a good sport and help your opponent. Remind them they need an observer. The observer is looking at the ability of the player. Don't assume if an observed player loses, his or her skill level won't go up. The observers are off limits. They are there to observe the matches they are asked to watch. If you have a complaint about your opponent's skill level, write it on your score sheet. Do not ask an observer to watch a player or make rulings. Call for a referee. When observers are not watching a particular player, they roam the room watching random matches. Remember, this is for your benefit. As long as your team is playing honest, there's no reason to be uncomfortable with the presence of an observer. They're here to protect you. Our National Handicap Review Committee reviews all teams between each round, and the observers report to them after each match they observe. Oh, hey there. Back already? I was just making a few copies to make sure everyone would know who I am. Which brings me to my next topic. Name badges. All players need badges to enter the playing arena. Badges are in your registration packet, even for ineligible players. It's indicated on the badge if a player is ineligible. These players are allowed in the tournament arena to cheer for their team, but cannot be acting coaches. If they're caught coaching, it'll be considered illegal aid and therefore a ball in hand foul. Participating in a group consensus is okay. When entering the playing arena, only do so at the entrances. Do not jump over or crawl under the pipe and drape. After all, you don't want to spend your trip in Vegas in the hospital. If you're in need of a scooter to enter the arena, use the scooter to get to the player's seating and then have a teammate park it in the back of the room. The aisles must be clear at all times per Las Vegas fire code. Be sure to turn off your cell phones while in the tournament room unless you have silent or vibrate mode. Cell phones can be extremely distracting during play. Don't allow anyone on your team to answer a cell phone during their match. If they do, a timeout will be charged. Players are not allowed to wear headsets while playing their match. This is a modified single elimination event, which means every team gets two opportunities to play not necessarily two opportunities to lose. If you think you're out of the tournament, verify on the board your opponent has advanced as the winner and there is no longer a place for your team to advance. You'll find an event survey form included in your registration packet. Please complete this survey and turn it in with your first round score sheet. If you've misplaced it, please come to the control table after this video to get another. Now I'm going to turn it back over to the VO guy for information on forfeits, scorekeeping, and proper identification procedures. Forfeit time is 15 minutes. 
However, do not wait until 15 minutes to let the referee know that a team has not shown up for the match. Even though the forfeit time is 15 minutes, every effort is made to try to locate the team that does not show up. When you fill out the survey just mentioned, it requests the team captain's cell phone number and information on where you're staying. We need this information because we make every effort to find a team in case they were confused about their next match time. The sooner you let us know, the sooner we can try to find them. Please understand, if you and your team members are staying somewhere besides Westgate uh, and don't show up for a match, we may not be able to hold up the match long enough for you to get here. The tournament director will make the decision of when a match is actually forfeited based on the circumstances. Score sheets will be delivered to your table by a referee. When your match is called, go to the table you are assigned. Both teams are required to keep score. To avoid errors, be sure you complete the score sheet by filling in all matches won and totaling everything. Mark all innings and defensive shots. If it's determined that players are not marking defensive shots, the National Handicap Review Committee may raise skill levels. The referees will be watching for defensive shots to be marked. If they see a defensive shot played that is not marked, they will mark it on your score sheet with red pen. The observers will be watching for this as well. In 8-ball, please make sure you mark early 8s E8, 8-ball eight scratch 8S, eight 8-wrong eight pocket 8WP, eight 8 on the break 8OB, and break and runs BR on the score sheet. In 9-ball, mark 9 on the snap 9OS, and break and runs BR. Patches for break and runs, 8 on the break and 9 on the snap, will be rewarded when the score sheet is turned in. Just come to the control table with the score sheet, whether you won or lost the match. The winning team is responsible for making sure the control table receives both teams' score sheets. Any team caught fraudulently keeping score or altering the score sheet in any manner will be subject to disqualification. Team captains should ensure at the beginning of each match all players on your team have their picture ID. It's up to the players participating in each match to verify the ID of their opponent prior to the match starting. If a player doesn't have his ID at that time, the match is forfeited. <coughs> to illustrate how important the identification process is, entire teams have been suspended from the league due to players impersonating other players in past events. Although they were the ones who cheated, the other team allowed it to happen by not checking their identification. Don't. Welcome back. Let's cover a few more important items before we get this tournament underway. If it's brought to our attention that you or one of your players is soft breaking, a warning will be issued and we will then advance to the penalty level phases described in the rules of conduct in the event program guide. A player may only be coached once per game. If a coach suggests a timeout, the timeout must be taken. Mark the coaching timeouts on your score sheet with a T. Don't forget the cue ball is always live. Don't let your players touch the cue ball at the end of a game until it's stopped rolling completely. This may result in a foul, however common sense must prevail. Referees are available at all times. If a shot is close, stop the match and call the referee to watch the shot. Referees cannot be expected to rule on a shot they were not asked to watch. The referees for this event are all APA League members who have volunteered for this duty in order to make this an enjoyable event for everyone. Please treat them with the courtesy and respect they deserve. Players treating referees in a disrespectful or uncooperative manner are subject to disqualification by the tournament director. Now we're almost at the end, but this video would not be complete without a few more words from Mr. V.O. himself, so let's hear what else he has to say. Help us keep this tournament on schedule. Keep the matches moving. Pick your next player quickly and limit your coaching time. In 8-ball, sudden death will be implemented 3 hours 45 minutes into a match. Each team must be in the fifth individual match by the 3 hours 45 minutes mark, or all subsequent individual matches will begin with a rack worth two team points. If that two-point rack mathematically wins the team match, the team match will be over. If it does not win the team match, a second rack worth one team point will conclude that individual match. This procedure will continue in each subsequent individual match until a team mathematically wins or the overall match finishes in a tie. One two-point rack, followed by one one-point rack if necessary. 
Tiebreakers will be decided by the team that won the most individual matches. Note, during sudden death, the individual match winner will be the player who wins the two-point rack. In nine ball, sudden death is implemented at the three-hour mark, and all subsequent matches will have double point value placed on each ball. Please review the dress code in the event program and make sure your entire team is in proper attire. Proper attire must be worn at all times in the tournament area. Look at the opposing team's attire prior to the start of the match. Let the referee know if you have any concerns regarding the attire of anyone on the opposing team. No dress code violations will be called during the match. Your social security number will be needed at cash payout for anyone who receives any additional prize winnings, including all cash and merchandise, totaling at least $600. The APA is required by federal law to report any tournament awards totaling $600 or more in cash prizes, merchandise at retail value, and travel assistance. If you do not have your social security number at payout, you will not be able to receive your winnings that day. If you are unable to provide the number before the tournament concludes, you must provide it to us before your winnings will be shipped. A sportsmanship award is presented in these events. Vote on teams for sportsmanship by coming to the control table or making a note on your score sheet that you'd like to nominate a team that's been good sports. Our policy regarding protests. We have official protest forms here at the control table and the protest fee is $50. Keep in mind, if your protest is in regards to skill levels, all teams are reviewed by our National Handicap Review Committee, whether or not you submit an official protest and pay $50. All you need to do if you have a concern about an opponent's skill level is make a note on your score sheet describing in detail what your concern is. Be as descriptive as possible. Describe the actions that led you to believe a player's handicap is inaccurate. Well, looky there. You made it all the way through the video. In case you missed any of it, you can find it on our website, poolplayers.com, as well as our Facebook page for reference throughout the tournament. A copy of the National Tournament Rules are printed here in the event program. Our opening ceremonies will be starting shortly. We ask that you give the same attention to our opening ceremonies as you have given to Mr. V.O. and to myself. Our control captain will be giving you table assignments shortly. If you don't hear your table assignment, they'll be posted on this screen. If you have any questions, feel free to ask our staff here at the control table. Thank you for your attention, good luck, and good shooting.